Alrighty, let's make my absent-mindedness count so that, if nothing else, this is a little reminder of possible future conditions you may face which could do harm to your orchids. Let's just say a little jolt out of a complacency that can creep in because I have several candidates that I did not protect from a 34 degrees Celsius day without wind which got hit the hardest resulting in sunburn but not just sunburn. As my dad always said, if you're going to do something, do it right or else it would be a waste of time. So that's what I did. I went all in to the point that some of my orchids got boiled. The natural reaction while still panicking is you want to do something about the situation as in immediately intervene and try to undo the damage you see or prevent further damage from happening, which is completely understandable. But depending on what time of day you notice the situation, it is already too late. Here is what you must not do, even though at the time it would make perfect sense. Do not apply any form of water on your orchid once the sunburn damage comes to your attention. The cells that have been most affected are wet at first and other leaves or structures that have not been damaged are very hot, close to succumbing to the extreme conditions. So adding water, which will 100% be cooler than any temperature the surface and the structures of your orchids has, is going to invite all sorts of issues, meaning you can introduce more moisture to the leaves that have burnt beyond repair and are still boiling hot with cells that are burnt, collapsed and filled with hot liquid. There are openings we cannot see and adding cool water can introduce microbes into the structures which without any intervention will dry out with the leaves once the liquid within them evaporates and the leaves turn to crisp. Also, trying to cool your orchid down while it is burning up will compromise leaves that are still intact. By adding cooler water, even if you think the water is warm, it will still be cooler than what the surface of your leaves are. So by adding water onto those leaves will result in more damage to leaves which are potentially still okay because they were protected by other foliage or pseudobulbs. While it is our first instinct to use water to cool the orchid down, this is not what you want to do. Hard as it is, hold off. You can remove the orchid from the sun and place her in a shady spot and then unfortunately you need to wait a couple of days to see just how bad the damage is. And very importantly, allow any burnt structures to dry out and during those days refrain from misting as well. Let me address some examples and courses of action based on the different examples of damage that I have. I hope you never find yourself in this situation, but if you do, then I'm glad that I have a few teachable moments with my examples to help you. Making what happened here worth something. Please be so kind as to give this video a thumbs up and take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Not for more content like this, I do not need a repeat. Instead, for many videos relating to orchids and their care, the good, the bad, and in this video, of course, the ugly. Thank you so much. That support goes a long way and is greatly appreciated. So let's start with the Cymbidium. Look, I've been procrastinating on this repot for months. However, that would not have stopped this from happening because this would be her location or one of the chairs that we have around the patio. The unfortunate thing about this is that the orchid is already very weak. She is going to go through a really tough reset process and with all the sunburn on the leaves she had left, there's not much there to photosynthesize. So the question here is whether she's even going to make it after I've cleaned her up, divided her and repotted her. Cymbidiums are tough. It's going to take many years to get her to bounce back but as bad as this looks I think the orchid will be okay eventually. Meanwhile if I'm trying to look for a silver lining this might make the whole process of repotting her so much easier because the pseudobulbs in the center also boiled which means they are no more. Yes I am pointing out silver linings because that is my coping mechanism. <laughs> my Blatilla bowl. This is super unfortunate, but let's get with the silver lining straight away. This orchid loses her leaves anyway, so we have another chance next season to have beautiful green foliage. While it is way too premature to have leaves looking like this, she could still be absorbing energy and getting more stronger with her structures. This orchid will not be set back and she has had 
plenty, plenty of fertilizer and good stuff poured into her pot. That for this season, it's a mishap, but it's not a detriment to the orchid, which is not something I can say for the next candidate. However, a deciduous orchid, when this happens to one of those, that is a blessing in disguise. And there's still plenty of green on all the other foliage that each growth has. There's still plenty of room to fertilize. But let's go to one that I'm not entirely sure is going to make it. This is my Dendrobium antenatum. Completely, completely forgot about this orchid. This orchid can take a lot of sunlight, but every orchid has its limits as well, especially on a day that I described earlier. The pseudobulbs shriveled within a couple of days, of course, bud blast, which is a classic result of extreme heat. No humidity, no breeze, nobody paying attention. Okay, we can also say it's a Dendrobium. She'll bounce back. We shall see. What I'm doing with this one at this stage is absolutely nothing. However, being that there is not much going on, I don't have any new growths to speak of. I'm going to care for this orchid not as vigorously as I used to with fertilizer because now I believe we're also going to be incurring root rot. So what I'm going to do, and if you have a similar situation, if you have new growths of the season that are still developing, focus on those and treat them gently give them plenty of calcium nitrate, calcium and magnesium, and reduce all the quantities by 30% to see if the orchid can't bounce back. I'm not completely ignoring the older growth, but when something like this happens and the canes start to decline in such a way that they are shriveling, there's also an issue in the pot because not only does our foliage heat up in conditions that extreme, but the media does as well. And this is where evaporative cooling would have been ideal. But no, not even the evaporative cooling of Lekka can counteract that kind of heat. So my lava rock heated up as well. And with that, the roots are shot. So I'm going to be focusing on the new growths, give them a little bit of something, something, see if they will survive, see if a new root system is going to grow. And if not, lesson learned. But unfortunately, Dendrobium antenatum took a major, major hit. This one is a little bit annoying because it took quite some effort to start getting nice new growth to grow, especially during the cooler months of the year where I also brought the orchid inside if things were just a little bit too harsh in my opinion. And I lost a lead, a growing point, completely singed and burnt. But it didn't just happen on this orchid and that is what we're going to finish this video off with when we get there, the nobly orchids. There's a lot of work to be done on those, we'll explain that. But in this scenario, I'm doing absolutely nothing. I'm caring for this orchid as is. Same amount of fertilizer because she has plenty of other growths that I can work with. Only this growing point right here was burnt to such a degree, it is not a growing point anymore. So you see, while in some instances, an orchid can take a direct hit, it is not all lost because the way the angle of the sun was hitting the hardest for the longest during the most challenging time can affect a single growth only. And with that, that is my silver lining for my Schweinfurtianum. The one thing though that I'm also looking out for on all the orchids that I'm addressing today is pests. They are now severely weakened and very vulnerable. So pests, yep it's going to be a chore to keep up and make sure to keep them safe. My beautiful display of the Van der Chau Praia and the Papilionanthe Teres variety under Sonii got a major hit. All the blooms wilted and the end result is that while the blooms recovered the next day to a degree, the scorch remained on the petals and sepals and any kind of extremities that were hit hardest by the angle of the sun. Now, if your orchid is weak and this happens to you in your case, by all means, cut all the spikes off. You need to conserve energy. You don't want the blooms in any way, shape or form holding the orchid back from mobilizing hormones into what her next growth process would be. However, my Chao Praia and my Papilionanthe, they're pretty large, they're pretty strong. I only took off two spikes where the blooms had completely collapsed and didn't fully recover. And the scorched spike, while it looks unsightly, it still has a beautiful fragrance, so I'm taking it advantage of the fact this orchid is strong and I don't need to be that radical to get her to recover, which is a silver lining and a blessing. However, were she to be weakened, all of those spikes would be coming off just to help the orchid conserve energy. 
Saving the worst for last, two Dendrobium nobilis. One is not as affected, but this one, my no ID, has all the examples I'm going to apply today. I'm going to talk you through all the options here. The canes were literally boiled, and that's why the growing point collapsed. And with this option, what I can do is cut into the tissue down here, seal it off with cinnamon, and then at least I have a little bit of a cane left, and then we will still get some blooms in spring. Or if I don't like it at all, or in your case, you can cut it off all the way to the base. However, leave yourself a little bit of a gap, leave the first node intact, so that from the base a new growth can grow. Some people will not want to see nasty looking stubs all across their orchid. You may only have one incident, I have a lot of incidents, so it can possibly be more unsightly to leave the canes as opposed to cutting them, but then you have to consider as well. The orchid is going to need every single structure in order to draw from to have the energy to perform again the following year. So what is your priority? That is what you need to ask yourself. An aesthetically more appealing looking orchid or think of the orchid in such a way that she is going to need all the help she can get and my aesthetic preferences need to take a step aside. And I am taking the latter option. Eventually all the leaves will come off that have been sunburned to a crisp because to some degree they're already falling off in their own accord. And with the exception of three canes, every cane that grew this season is compromised. This one looking the worst, but we can go in a little bit closer and I'll show you another one which still looks somewhat green despite the burnt leaves. But you can see how the growing point right here, the leaf in there, it's history. But I'm still leaving it because there's still more drying out to be done. This cane right here, same thing, it's gone to the point that this here, it's not quite dry yet. And that is also something I'm going to leave and let it deteriorate by itself and then cut it off where there is the dry part. This avoids any kind of pathogens getting into fresh tissue. So you see, it's really, really difficult. I know the initial intention is, oh, cut everything off, make it look nice, get the visual cleaned up, and then it won't feel so bad, it won't look so bad. You feel like you're being proactive, but that would be a mistake. So while this happened four days ago, I am still not ready to go in and cut anything off just to make an orchid look a little bit nicer. See this growing point? We may be lucky. Nope. Maybe, maybe, you can see that the little leaf here, yeah, that one is damaged, but it's green right at the tip right there. So we may get lucky with that one. Now, there's a difference in this orchid that I want to show you, and that is the canes right here. Just for future reference, okay? This is not sunburn. I know it looks like it, we just saw the antenatum, but it's not. These are the oldest, oldest canes that the orchid came with. And these started deteriorating many months ago, very slowly, but many months ago. And I'm letting them decline all the way down to the base. I'm not cutting into them at all. So this is the really dry point here. And yes, this one I can cut into all the way down to where it dried off because it already created its own little callus. And that is safe. It's not pretty, but it's safe. We can take that leaf off as well. So let's give her a little twirl and see what we're up against in the back. We have some old leaves, that's fine. You see, we've got a burn, but we've got a growing point. That's important. Now, the care for something like this, you want to continue as per because you've got plenty of structures that still need to plump up. There are some growths that can still grow to full potential, which will then provide you with some blooms. And in my case, she gets 500 parts per million of an orchid fertilizer and calcium magnesium and calcium nitrate. So I'm not going to change anything with her because she's got still potential in her. Completely different case scenario to my antenatum where the roots got cooked as well. Let me just finish my thought if I didn't. I am not cutting any declining canes off because of age. I'm letting them go all the way down 
so that the energy in all these structures the orchid can take advantage of whether she was sunburnt or not. I was going to do a separate video on that, but you know, side note, sidebar, sidetrack. Squirrel, these structures still have energy all the way to the base and the orchid can really benefit from that. So it's very important not to make any rash decisions when you see something like this happen. Unfortunately, the damage is done. Now, it, depending on the time of day that you see your orchid, of course, if it is midday, you want to put her into the shade and then hopefully limit the damage as soon as possible. However, in my case, it was late afternoon and I saw a browning color from my usual corner of the eye appreciation of glossy green foliage. And I thought, what is going on there? And then I realized what had happened. And of course, then I started scrambling around the patio thinking what else went wrong. Anyway, so this is unfortunate because on the day, for example, this is Dendrobium nobili variety cooksonianum. This growth was still intact. You can see that after several days, what I thought was still intact actually is history. So I'm waiting also for this to dry off before I make a cut. The leaves, even though they look crispy, they're not coming off easily. So I'm leaving them on, but she has been losing leaves and she is still growing new growths, which is great. So I'm going to treat this orchid exactly the same as always. I'm going to work with these growths as if nothing ever has happened. Everything remains the same with the fertilizer concentration and focusing on getting these to grow to their full potential. And if I had tried to cool this orchid off by misting her, who knows what damage I would have done with this gorgeous growth in the middle that was protected by the foliage and the canes from the impact of the sun. You see, little umbrellas were up here, little leaves that shaded this orchid, so not all is lost. My keikis took a hit, and this could be a growing point that is lost, or maybe not. Time will tell. So while we can panic all we want, once the damage is done, and you may think, what is she doing putting the orchids into the sun? Well, actually, this is an overcast day, so <laughs> it's actually not sunny. Otherwise, we would be on the east side table because from here on in, these orchids are in the shade, as is my Schweinfortianum. I cannot move my Vanda totem pole. And well, my Antenatum is located where it is, and it comes into the shade all the time as well. The care moving forward for all these orchids, as I mentioned, is dependent on what they are doing, what they're capable of, what they need to be doing. But the most important thing is from here on in, they cannot be exposed to the conditions they would otherwise be able to tolerate under normal circumstances. A lot of shade and a lot of breeze and a lot of forgiveness is something else I also recommend that you do should you find yourself in a similar situation. Forgive yourself. But the main purpose of this video, and I hope I achieved it, was to give you a little bit of a hint, hint, nudge, nudge, jolt you out of your complacency so that you will never, ever find yourself in this situation. Unless, of course, it has happened to you and you were wondering what's next. What should I do? What can I do? Then I hope this video was helpful and welcome to the club of Scorched Orchids. There's a lot of us in this club. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, but I'm going to let you know right now that I appreciate your time watching. Thank you so very much. I'm also going to wish you a very beautiful day. And if I may be so bold as to attach a condition to that, then I'm going to tell you to please stay safe. Take care. Bye.